Ladies and gentlemen, it's time! The Ultimate Fighter Season 31 Reaction Show, brought to you by Car Steel. Hosted by Michael Adler. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard the man himself, Bruce Buffer. This is the Tough 31 Reaction Show hosted by yours truly, Michael Chandler, and brought to you by our friends at Car Shield. This is our pre-show. This is our first starting of this series. We are, we are talking today about what the next 12 weeks are going to look like. The Ultimate Fighter airs tomorrow. It premieres tomorrow, May 30th on ESPN. 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern. This reaction show will be releasing every single week at midnight Eastern time. So we will be getting, you guys will be getting my instant reaction to every single episode. What I was going through, what I was thinking, what is in this journal, what is in this binder, what was going on, how the producers, how they cut it, um, the ups and the downs, the things I don't remember that sparked memories that I get to react to and reminisce on and talk to you guys and convey to you guys, the things that was shown and the things that may have may or may not have been portrayed the way um, they really were in real life. You never quite know. And that's the beautiful thing about this. You guys get to see this in real time, my real time reaction on what is happening throughout this entire summer of Tough 31. We're going to have all kinds of guests lined up. Um, we already have a couple that are already committed to numerous shows. We have other ones that are flying in to come be a part of this. We'll be, we will be bringing guests on by the magic of Zoom, whether it be my fighters who I've already talked to, fighters on Connor's team um, who have committed to it, uh, other professional fighters, UFC fighters, UFC champions, uh, analysts, different friends of mine in the industry who could be right here on the power, uh, brought to us by the power of Zoom to be able to impart their wisdom, to ask their questions, to give their reaction. Um, and ultimately, I think the coolest thing about this is, like I said, you guys really will be living this with me. There will be a ton of questions answered. Um, there will be a ton of questions that will remain by each episode that comes out. Um, and more importantly, I'm just excited to live this with you guys. I'm excited to impart my, um, I guess my firsthand anecdotal experience of the entire show to you guys uh, right here on YouTube. So if you, if you are just finding this show and you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you can, uh, ring that bell as they say. So you will get notified when these episodes come out. Um, and this is going to be a fun journey and we get to live it together on ESPN every single week at, uh, seven o'clock Pacific, nine o'clock central, which is where we are at here in Nashville, Tennessee and 10 o'clock Eastern. Um, one quick note, I'm excited to bring you guys value. I'm excited to bring you guys uh, my firsthand experience, but I'm also excited to give you guys tangible gifts. We have a giveaway that's going to be running every single week. So make sure you tune into the episodes to find out how you can enter to win. Now, what is the prize? The prize is my favorite book. I quote it all the time. As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. It was written in 1902. Um, so it's got a lot of old school wisdom. Mind is the master power that molds and makes and the man and man is mind and evermore he takes the tool of thought and shaping what he wills brings forth a thousand joys a thousand ills so this is my favorite book of all time i quote it all of the time this is a brand new copy we have 12 of these that are all signed by yours truly and what's a book without a bookmark and what's a bookmark what better bookmark than a signed Panini card? We have 12 of these. They will be going inside of 12 of these As A Man Thinketh books, and we'll be giving them away every single week. So make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. Make sure you do not miss a show because you don't want to miss your chance to enter to win that prize. So let's talk about The Ultimate Fighter. For those of you who are just now, maybe you're a huge fan of Connor or a huge fan of me and you never really watched all the other 30, 30 seasons of The Ultimate Fighter. What is The Ultimate Fighter? Well, we fight for the Ultimate Fighting Championship. 
and you are fighting for an opportunity, competing for an opportunity to become an ultimate fighter, to get a UFC contract. So we descend upon the sandy deserts of Las Vegas, Nevada. Conor McGregor and myself are the coaches. There's going to be 16 guys there. Conor gets 18 guys. I get eight. I'm sorry, Connor gets eight guys. I get eight guys. That makes a total of 16 guys. Our guys then fight each other. So is it up to it is up to Connor and I to coach our team. This is my one of one cool binder uh, that they gave us there. That gave us all kind of information on the fighters, the schedule, um, run of what was going to be going on. To be quite honest, they didn't give us much information. A lot of times we were having to guess, having to anticipate, having to wonder what the heck was happening next. Um, but the general premise of the show is there are 16 fighters, 16 lucky fighters, because ultimately this started, you know, and it's, it was a tough road for some guys. Some guys traveled all the way to Las Vegas. They did kind of tryouts. They had to do interviews because there was a, a, a selection process, just like any reality TV show, just like any competition, there's a selection process. You can't just be a good fighter. You got to be a good fighter who is going to play well on camera, who's going to play well in the ultimate fighter house throughout the process of the ultimate fighter. They know what they're doing. They're extremely good at it. That's why there has been 31 seasons. This was the 31st season. So I think, um, there was over 20 guys. I believe it was 25 guys that came to Vegas and they whittled it down to only 16 guys. 16 guys got the opportunity, but that means, you know, eight or so, 10 or so guys showed up and didn't even get to be on the show, which was obviously tough, but we wish them well. But I had to put together a team. I remember I was actually right here in my studio when I got the phone call because we knew we knew that I was um, most likely going to be the guy who was going to be competing against Connor uh, to fight later this year, but also be um, a coach on the Ultimate Fighter. But we didn't quite know until we got the paperwork, got the contract. I want to say it was a week and a half before. So when you pull it back, I get that call. I get the contract. We sign it. But then I got to put together a team or sorry, I got to put together a team of coaches. Now this, we filmed over a four and a half week, uh, time period, which isn't a ton of time. I understand, you know, other seasons were, other seasons were filmed in six weeks or eight weeks. Um, so that was a little bit longer, but this was still a four over a four week time commitment. So to be able to find a coach who could leave their family for four weeks straight, come live in Vegas, uh, who could leave their team and come to Vegas and be one of my coaches to, uh, to, to coach up my team was not an easy task. Um, so I kind of, made phone calls, obviously a lot of phone calls, my management, Dave Martin, Randall Alleman at Martin, Martin advisory group. They helped out a lot. I got a, a lot of great friends in the industry. Thank God. Um, a lot of connections over the last 15 years that I've made. So I was able to make some phone calls. Um, actually a local guy in Vegas, uh, who is a phenomenal talent when it comes to coaching, who has actually coached on the ultimate fighter before Robert Drysdale, who is a multiple time grappling world champion, uh, extremely decorated guy as a fighter. Uh, as well as a coach. And as I said, he had been through this process before. So he was a shoe in um, to be a coach for me. He's a great leader, great dude. Um, I could stand to be around him for that four or five week period because that's definitely part of it. You want to be around people that you trust. They're good at their, they're good at their craft, as well as you want to be able to spend a lot of time with them. Um, and our, one of my, my striking coach, one of my striking coaches down at, um, our gym down in South Florida, uh, Jason Strout, he was there for us. He was there with us the entire four week period. Ryan Bader, who was at, who actually competed on one of the seasons of the ultimate fighter. Uh, he was there most of the time we brought in Bob cook, um, the legendary Bob cook who, who coached names like Cain Velasquez, Josh Koscheck, Josh Thompson, Daniel Cormier. Um, so his mind for the sport was absolutely awesome. I think we had him for almost two weeks. Sean Soriano, who is a training partner of mine and a phenomenal coach as well. He was out there for a week or so. Um, man, it was, uh, it was a, a lot of, of fun, but it was definitely hard to, uh, each week trying to make sure we had enough coaches to bring enough value to these guys. Cause I'm obviously the head coach. I'm the centerpiece, if you will. My name is on the, you know, my name is on the Jersey and my name is on the, on the booklet, but just like a fighter, I know it's me competing. It's Bruce Buffer saying my name. It's me going out there trying to win the fight, but I don't get there without a great team. So I wanted to put together a great team of coaches. Um, so 
they gave us this huge list. Um, I remember getting to Vegas. That's when we finally got the list. We had about a day to do some study, do some research. They gave us a, a packet inside of this binder right here. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the 16 guys. It was the 20 something guys. I forget how many it was. So we spent about 24 hours, barely slept, uh, cause we were there in Vegas at my house, um, getting on all the different MMA websites, YouTube, um, trying to find footage on these guys. Who are we going to pick? Who's our, who's our guys that we want? You know, um, the names have been released now. So you guys know there was, uh, two different weight classes. You guys know some of the names, obviously those names were on our list, but quite frankly, we didn't know which guys were going to be of the 16 that we were going to pick from. So we had to, we had to study all of them and we had to kind of go through a ranking system. We had to kind of see, you know, if we're going to build a team, because ultimately this is a competition. This was team Chandler versus team McGregor. And ultimately when I started the process, all I wanted to do was beat Connor. It's all I wanted to do. I wanted to prove that I was a better fighter than Connor, which I'll get to do later this year. But I wanted to prove that I was a better coach, a better friend, a better mentor, a harder worker, be more diligent with my 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 disciplined planning of, of putting together a, a plan for these guys to, to go out there and compete and win. Um, but ultimately, uh, we had to put together a ranking system of who we thought would be our guys that we want to go out and get if we can, if they were on the show. Um, so then I believe the next, you know, the next day they whittled it down to that 16 and they say, here they are. And they're, they're broken up into weight classes and they're broken up into, as you know, it's, it's now been, um, put out there. It's not leaked. Dana said it himself. Some of the guys were prospects. Some of the guys were veterans. Um, and then, uh, so then we had a choice. Okay. Hey, we got to figure out, you know, they, we didn't know until the moment that, uh, that they told us how we were going to choose the teams, actually how we were going to choose the team. So when I say, uh, you know, disclaimer right now, and I get this question all the time, Hey, how much of this reality show is scripted? And I can honestly tell you, this is no BS. I'm not blowing smoke. None of it was scripted whatsoever. Now there was times where I knew they were putting us in situations, but they, it was never a kind of a whisper, Hey, we're about to do this. So make sure you do that. Or, Hey, uh, just to let you know, Connor's coming in, go, go this direction and walk in this hallway, not this hallway, you know? So they wish so we run into There was never that kind of stuff. I can honestly say we had a microphone on us at all times. There was, you know, right now I know I'm looking at a camera, but I, there was always three or four cameras on it at, at, at a time. And sometimes it's not the camera closest to you. That's capturing you. The cap that could be, that it could be having this camera on me right now, very close, but it could be a camera way over there in the corner of the gym. That's actually getting a very long shot, a wide shot, whatever you call it in cinematography. Um, so it was a very interesting, a very interesting, uh, kind of time, obviously being there. But when I say none of it was scripted and I say that to, to go back to my point of, we didn't know how the teams were going to be picked. You can speculate all day long. I can sit there with Coach Strout and Bader and Soriano and and uh, Bob Cook and these different guys, uh, but ultimately, we uh, we didn't know. We were just kind of left to make a list of guys, and they gave us this packet. You know, can't really uh, zoom in on it much, but like you know, we got these guys in here, and it's got the the names, the weights, the records. Uh, it's kind of some cool, some interesting kind of fun facts about themselves. Hey, they have this, this many kids or they have, you know, Hey, this is their profession or this is how many fights that they have. Or, um, you know, there was, that was when we got the opportunity to really fall in love with these guys' stories. And that was one thing that caught me off guard very quickly was I came there for one reason, one reason only for Chandler to beat McGregor. I, that's what I thought this was going to be the ultimate fighter. McGregor versus Chandler. Michael Chandler is going to beat Connor at every turn. That's all I cared about. Then I shook my guys' hands. Then we started talking. Then I started seeing their, their backgrounds, what they've been through, the ups and the downs, um, their goals, their aspirations, what they want to do, what they want to be, what they want to have, and just getting to know these guys as team Chandler. And immediately I realized, holy cow, this is not about beating Connor at all. This has nothing to do with beating Conor McGregor. For me personally, that's on the back burner now. This has everything to do with my guys under the banner of Team Chandler. Those guys with my name on the back of their jersey, it has everything to do with me showing up every single day, putting my best forward, 
best foot forward and putting them in the best situation possible to win. And that brought a lot of pressure. That brought a lot of pressure. Um, I'd be lying if I said it was an easy process. Cause once I, once I crossed over to fully invested, there was no going back. <laughs> there was no going back. And, uh, I threw myself into the fire and I'm glad I did. Um, so the ultimate fighter, those 16 guys, they lived in an ultimate fighter house. Now, some people ask, Hey, did you live with the fighters? No, I did not live with the fighters. Um, and that's not a spoiler alert. That's, you know, that's how the show goes. The coaches get their own house and the fighters get their own house. 16 fighters in one house. Think about that. I don't know if you, you know, if we're here in speaking to the, <clears throat> those of us who went to college or those of us who were young once before we maybe got married and had kids and stuff, we all had roommates, certain things about roommates that you just didn't like. I remember in college too, I lived with a couple of my best friends, but they go from best friend to worst enemy with a couple dishes in the sink, eating your lunch, you know, drinking your milk, drinking your, what, you know, your, uh, your soda or whatever it may be, leaving laundry and crap. They go from your best friend to your worst enemy. Now imagine these guys, they had no emotional connection to anybody. They didn't choose to live with these guys. Well, technically they did choose because they signed up for the ultimate fighter and they knew they were going to be living with the other guys, but you're living with 15 other guys, 15 other roommates, 15 other guys who could be from the same town that you're from or all the way across the entire world. Now stacked on top of that, I might be fighting you in a seven days. I might be fighting you in four days. I got to share the same bathroom as you. Maybe you just got done taking a dump and I got to walk in and smell your dump right after you leave and I'm fighting you in four days. I got to brush my teeth before practice and you're brushing your teeth in the sink next to me. We're sharing the same refrigerator. It's got your name. I get to see your name all the time. You know, think you pull yourself back from a, a normal fighter. So I know I'm fighting Connor. Uh, and then obviously the last 30 something fights I've had, I don't get constant daily reminders in the actual physical form every single day. Now, of course I can get on social media and I can see Connor on there. Uh, my last fight, I could see Poirier on social media. I could see people talking about him, but it's not, it wasn't that close to home. Imagine living with the guy that you're going to fight and the guy who is standing in front of you, standing in between you and your dreams and your goals and what you want to do. And the guy who will be standing in front of you inside of an octagon very soon, you're living with that person. How do you deal with it? How would you deal with it? I'm asking you because I'm also asking myself, I don't know how I would deal with it. I was thanking God every single day. Yeah, I had my own hardships, of course, but goodness gracious to be living with those guys is just crazy. So I think that's, that's one of the big storylines of the show. Obviously it's team Chandler versus team McGregor and it's me and Connor and it's our, our rivalry, our interactions, but the interactions of the fighters and, um, the, the, the fun that these guys had, um, coupled with the ups and downs, the joy, the turmoil, and just the pressure, um, you guys have seen the promos. You guys have seen uh, former Ultimate Fighter seasons. They wear that. They wear that little necklace with an octagon on it. That's their microphone, and that's that's not just um, that's not just specific to the Ultimate Fighter. A lot of reality shows do that. You know, Survivor has the little piece of wood or uh, whatever. The Amazing Race. All these different reality shows. They wear a necklace because it's just easier that way. Um, Love Island. Not that I watched every episode of Love Island. I'm not saying I did that, but maybe I did. They wear a necklace. <laughs> um, so the guys were wearing an octagon. Um, so they're mic'd up at all times. They got cameras on them at all times. So they're in the house, no privacy whatsoever, not to mention no phones, no social media, no TVs, no shows, no electronics. There was one form of communication outside of that house. And that was a landline. And that landline only went to the producers. So if the producers had to call and say, Hey, you know, Hey, bus is going to be here in five minutes. That phone would ring. And one of the guys would go grab it and say, okay, okay, boys, we got to go 10 minutes. That was the only line of communication. They never got to talk to their families. I mean, I, I just put myself in that scenario. I am a father of two. Uh, my wife is my best friend. I have not gone a half of a day in the last 10 years without some kind of communication with her. Um, so it's, uh, you know, she, she, and they would be 
have zero contact with anybody. The only contact they would have would be with them or the producers. You know, there's a couple of ones there who I became, you know, they're great people. I will say that. I mean, you get to know these people very well. A um, couple of the different producers would be like around at all times, all hours of the day. Cause you never know, maybe, uh, you know, they have to be ready because maybe at two o'clock in the morning while they think everyone's sleeping, someone opens up a window and another guy gets ticked off about it. And they all of a sudden start fighting. They want to be able to capture that. They can capture it with the, the microphones. And they say, Oh, something's going on over in room number three or whatever it might be. Um, so anyways, 16 fighters in one house, four to five to six people in a bedroom, sharing bathrooms, just absolutely ridiculous. Not to mention the fact that you're going to fight, fight those guys. Um, then, uh, there was a, there will be a fight pretty much every episode, I would guess. Um, you know, obviously I haven't seen the show just like you haven't seen the show. So ulti uh, ultimately, if you go back and watch some of the other seasons, there's usually a fight at every, at the end of every episode and each episode will be kind of tailored towards, um, certain guys, certain rivalries, um, and certain relationships. You know, there was definitely some interesting and fun and might I say like inspiring relationships on my team. Uh, cause obviously I was around my team a lot, but there were some really cool relationships. Um, you gotta remember too, guys bring baggage from outside of the outside of the show into it as well. There could have been guys on two guys on my team who had fought each other previously. So now they have somewhat of a rivalry, but then they come in. Now they're both part of team Chandler. So they're supposed to be working together, but ultimately they're all individuals there trying to get to the same place, trying to get to the same uh, goal, which is to become the ultimate fighter. So man, you guys are going to enjoy that aspect of it. Uh, and then for us as coaches, the preparation, what does the preparation look like? I can tell you this, I didn't have any idea what the pressure preparation was going to look like because we didn't know if we were going to get there and we were going to have three weeks till the first fight or we're going to have two days until the first fight. And then if it's, you know, three days until the first fight, that means two days they have to make weight. So now the way you're training, if you have a fight two weeks from now compared to two days from now is a lot different. Is it more about weight management? Is it more about skills? Is it more about your deficiencies where we look at it and say, there's only a couple ways where you can lose this fight. So let's go ahead and make sure we work on those things. Each of these guys had different attributes, different strengths, different weaknesses. We all have weaknesses. And in the microcosm of the competition, it's not just about winning. It's not just about winning the fight. It's about winning the show, or it's not just about winning a fight in general. We have these different simple truths about how you win a mixed martial arts fight, but these were special. This was, these were a special rule set. Is it three rounds? Is it two rounds? Is it one round? Maybe you guys will have to see, but maybe it wasn't, um, a, a standard mixed martial arts fight because it is in, uh, the spirit of this actual specific competition. So there was different strategies that we had to employ, different strategies that we had to, had to say, you look at a guy and then once we got the matchups, that's when things really started getting real. You know, you might have two guys fighting on the first day, or you might have five guys fighting on the first day, or you might have one guy fighting. You never quite know. So we were always feeling like we were moving on the fly. And I think that was one of the most, that was one of the most unexpected aspects of it. The one of the most unexpected aspects of it was that we never really knew what was coming next and that can wear on you. And selfishly, I was thinking about myself, you know, or I'm talking anecdotally about my experience. It was wearing on me, but it was also wearing on the guys. The guys knew what they signed up for, but it was wearing on them. They never knew what was next. It was a blessing when they were, it was, it was, it was a, a beautiful thing when they were able to say, okay, now I'm fighting this guy and, I, and I'm fighting this guy. I'm fighting this guy on this day. I don't care if it's, you know, whether it's two weeks, yeah, it'd be great if it was one week away or three days or three weeks, whatever. At least they have a name and they have a date as a, as fighters, we always want a name and a date because then you can actually train for something. Um, so coaching these guys, their different mentalities and all of that. Uh, we will talk about coming up next. Um, right now is a good time to take a break to hear a word from our sponsor. 
Now's a good time to thank our show sponsor, CarShield. We're all about who's the greatest here, and CarShield really goes to the mat for vehicle owners. They're the number one most trusted auto service protection company in America, and they're here to help protect you from surprise car repair costs. Flexible month-to-month plans through CarShield can cover up to 5,000 parts of your car after they break down. When you're covered through CarShield, you'll always have someone in your corner at the repair shop. Visit carshield.com and check it out now. Now, back to the show. All right, as we left off, we were talking about how do we coach these guys? How do we train these guys? How do these guys respond and react to our training? You got to remember too, listen, um, I'm not sitting here trying to toot my own horn, but yes, I am a, uh, I'm definitely a pillar up in the top percentage of mixed martial arts fighters in the world, um, both in platform, name recognition, accomplishment, and overall mentality. But that doesn't mean these guys are going to like me. It doesn't mean uh, that these guys are going to believe in every single thing that I say. That doesn't mean that they're going to trust every single thing that I say. Put yourself in their shoes right now. You are one of these fighters. You are sitting in your, on your couch and you're watching Michael Chandler fight or Conor McGregor fight. Probably like, man, someday I want to be like them. I want to have that kind of platform. I want to fight like them. I want to make that kind of money. I want to be under the bright lights. I want that, that, that about that person. But then you get pulled on to this thing called the ultimate fighter. You get on maybe team Chandler or team McGregor. Then all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, I liked watching him as a fan. I liked watching him. Uh, I like him as a fighter, but that doesn't mean I, I like him as a coach. Doesn't mean that I agree with the way that he fights or the way that he wants to coach me. Can I remember that is all an aspect of it too. And I can tell you this, there was a very good, uh, there's a very good kind of Delta between what I wanted certain guys to do and what they believed that they wanted to do for certain guys. And there was an absolute unwavering head, head over heels. I'll do whatever you say, coach type of mentality by others. So it was, it was, you know, in in me, of course, as, as a coach, I'm like, man, I love that. And I could just tell this guy to run through that brick wall and he'll do it. Hey man, I'll tell him, tell him to cut weight this way, or I'll tell him to do this many reps that way. And Hey, I know he doesn't like doing this, but this is what we need to do in order to get him in the best situation to be successful. And he does it. And you got the other guy over here who kind of like, Hey, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't really train like that. Or, Hey, you know, I don't really think that's, uh, that's the way I should do it. Or, Hey, I don't really, I know that might work for you, but it might not work for me. Or, Hey, uh, you know, What's coming next, coach? Hey, coach, what are we doing tomorrow? Hey, what are we doing three days from now? Hey, coach, what are we doing a week from now? And I'm in my mind, I'm like, mother fudger. Dude, I don't even know what I'm doing at the end of this practice, let alone three days from now, you know? So I think the pressure of me having these guys looking to me, asking what was next, what are we doing next? Where are we going next for certain guys? um, They needed that. And I, quite frankly, was not able to give it to them. And it doesn't mean I was, I was, unmotivated. It doesn't mean that I was not prepared. It was just, I didn't know what was coming next. So therefore I didn't know how to plan what was coming next. And therefore I couldn't tell them what was coming next. The amount of times that the guy would be like, Hey, can you go ask uh, Cole, the producer uh, about this? Or, Hey, are we going to be able to watch film? Or, Hey, can we get access to the, uh, you know, the hot tubs or, Hey, can we get access to some Norma tech boots and all these different things? I'm like, boys, I'm here. I'm trying to figure this thing out, but I'm worried about this thing. I'm worried about this practice. And then we're worried about something two steps from now. So that was definitely a part of it. I actually have, you know, I, I alluded to this journal and this journal right here actually was given to me by my manager and longtime best friend, Randall Alleman, the man who actually I am here in large part because of him. Uh, I wrestled against him at Arizona State back in the day. We met each other. He ended up becoming an MMA manager. And uh, I, long story short, have been signed with him and Dave Martin, Martin Advisory Group, ever since I started Mixed Martial Arts. But he gave me this journal and it was perfect that it was read. So I wanted to read you guys just a, uh, because we're going to be doing a couple of these kind of journal entries, what was going on in Iron Michael's mind, if you will. but this was actually the uh, the first week. So this pro and it says this process has been. This is uh, two days in. Sorry, three days in. This process has been very fun thus far. It is a lot more planning than I anticipated. I have to give the guys practices tailored to them each day. And each day we either have guys fighting that that week or the next. So. Each week, we either had guy, a guy fighting that week, which meant he was kind of the number one priority, but we also had guys fighting the next week, which didn't mean that they were on the back burner, but we really had to focus on the guys at, uh, who were fighting this week. 
all the guys have been 100% open-minded except he has he hasn't bought into trusting me yet his quote unquote cut on his chin has made him sit out of practice and he keeps asking for individual work the problem is he fights next week and i have four guys fighting this week i like the kid he is like me in a lot of ways, but he likes to plan a little bit too much so he knows what's coming. I think he likes control a little bit too much. We will get it figured out. It's only week one. So that was kind of a good little excerpt into where my mind was, you know, thinking about a certain guy who, you know, by my estimation, this was me retrospectively going back. He likes to plan too much. He wants to know what's coming next too much. And it wasn't that I couldn't give it to him. It was also just, you know, maybe part of it was ego. Maybe part of it was, uh, you know, Hey man, I'm in charge here. Like these guys have bought in you haven't. So it's, it's neither here nor there. Like I'm, I'm here, I'm here for everybody. Um, so that was just a cool little excerpt of kind of showing you guys through my journal, what I was thinking. And this was probably something I wrote, you know, the next morning and then had to bring this into practice as far as the emotional baggage. And that was just one guy and seven other dudes. And I'm also thinking about seven other dudes whose futures are in my hands. So, um, the good thing too, you know, going back to my coaching staff, my, my coaching staff stepped up so much. Uh, Jason Strout is number one, a phenomenal coach, but a, a great friend of mine and just a phenomenal human being, uh, mainly a striking coach, obviously boxing, kickboxing. Uh, you guys see me hit and miss with him all the time on social media, do a lot of training with him. He goes with me with every fight, uh, does a lot of sparring with me. Actually, if I need a guy to kind of, you know, quote unquote, for lack of a better term, beat up a little bit, you know, him emulate somebody. And I kind of like get that, get that, uh, that feeling of kind of really putting the pressure and putting the gas on, on somebody it's him. So he was a great training partner and coach for these guys and, and, uh, they loved him. So having a strong coaching staff was a very number one important thing to me to be able to put these guys in the best scenario possible to win, but also, um, just make them feel comfortable. They're only there for a very short amount of time if you really think about it. So physically, yeah, we needed them to be there, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, whatever they needed to have that, have their bucket full, have their, have their, their emotional bucket full firing on, on all cylinders because their heart was full. They felt believed in, they felt supported, making them believe in themselves more than they believed in themselves. You know, when they first got there, maybe even thinking, shoot, there's no way I can win this thing to all of a sudden, hopefully spending a week with us and a week with me and my coaches and thinking, man, maybe I can actually win this thing. You see the competition, you see the other guys, you realize you got some skills. Um, so having Jason there, Ryan Bader, um, was awesome too, because he, uh, he, it was a different season than his, obviously the way it was set up. Um, but he had been that been through that firsthand experience. So having him, um, me, what I'm getting at is me being able to lighten the load for myself to be able to spread it out amongst, uh, a couple of different guys. We always had two coaches there at all times. So similar to this, uh, kind of, you know, I guess it was more of a, a tiff that I was having with one of the fighters. Um, I was able to say, okay, hey, I need to focus on this guy and kind of figure out this relationship because I still trust, I still, I still want to put him in the best situation possible, even, even if he doesn't fully trust me yet. Um, so I was able to kind of nurture that relationship, pour into it, um, cause that's what I felt led to do, but then still made sure I had my other coaches really pouring into the other guys as well. Um, so, um, it was part of the process, man, and the rivalries that you guys are going to see between my team and Connor's team were, uh, were pretty fun. Uh, every day I'd walk in, or I always got to the gym early cause that's what I, I always do just in life, but always I'm the coach. So I wanted to be there early. Me and my coach kind of do a, a little debrief here in my, in my little, uh, notebook, the red notebook. And, uh, then they would come in and my first thing I'd always say is, you know, Hey, what happened in the, in the house last night? And there was days where I was like, okay, that was, uh, really, it was that bad or wow. Okay. That guy, uh, that guy said that. Okay. You know, so there's gonna be some really fun, uh, rivalries between the guys. I had some guys with some pizzazz, man. My, my dudes were, were some dogs, you know, and that's what I kept saying, man. My dudes, my dudes had a fire in them. Um, they weren't there to mess around. 
They were not, they were there for one reason and one reason only. So that in, in and of itself makes it, uh, makes it so that they could care less about people's feelings. They were just there to win. So, um, some of those rivalries were, uh, were interesting to say the least. And then, you know, rivalries tra- change too. Cause you know, maybe, maybe the fact that you're fighting somebody within the next week really made it so that you really wanted to spit some venom, get in some guy, get in a guy's head, maybe pull a prank, maybe establish your dominance, maybe walk through the, through the house a little bit with your head and chest out a little bit more. Um, or maybe it made it so that you completely avoided him. Different guys handle things differently, but, um, but yeah, some of those relationships were, uh, were really cool, really fun, both in a good, good relationships and also venomous, uh, <laughs> Uh, hostile to say the least. And speaking of hostile, it's been all over the internet. Obviously, you guys saw the uh, the push, the shove, the face shove heard around the world, saw around the world, and uh, the you'll do what you're told line that Connor has uh, already put out. And obviously, that's not a, a spoiler. If it's a spoiler, you obviously haven't been following uh, any of the Tough 31 coverage because there's teasers out there, there's trailers out there, there's all kinds of uh, stuff coming out, getting you guys amped up and ready for this season because it is going to be fun. But Conor McGregor and I, I think, have a pretty good relationship. As good of a relationship as you can for a guy whose face you want to rip off, right? He he is a tough competitor. He is a a guy who is confident and believes in himself more than anybody um, that you may ha- see out there. Um, that's how he carries himself. That is his brand. That is notorious Conor McGregor. That is that is his uh, his his full on persona. So. Ultimately, he looks at me as a threat, um, ultimately, because we're going to fight each other. He looks at me as a, as a threat on this show. He doesn't want to lose. He wants Team McGregor to win. Um, he's got his guys that he has built bonds with. Maybe I beat one of his guys. What does that well up inside of him? What kind of anger does that well up inside of him? Maybe his guy beats my guy. What kind of pride and braggadocious confidence and and really throw salt on the wound does that well up inside Connor? Because Connor's good at, at all of that stuff. Connor likes to talk. Connor likes to get in your head. Connor likes to uh, he likes to be be the guy who establishes dominance both physically, the way that he stands, the way that he walks, and also linguistically, the things that he says. The verbal jujitsu, if you will. Uh, so Connor and I had our moments, both up and down. A lot of respect. Um, I think I respect the heck out of him as a competitor. I think he respects me as a competitor. He said some some complimentary things about me. I say complimentary things about him as well. We've also said some things where we 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 are very bold in our prediction that he believes he's going to slice right through me. He believes that he's a little bit too slicey, a little bit too dicey. I think I said I'm going to bludgeon him with my hands. I think my mystic Mike prediction is that I knock him out in the second second round. I go out there, I get in his face, I put the put the foot on the gas early. As I always do, I believe I wear him down in the first that he wilts and I knock him out in the second. That's my bold prediction. Um, but ultimately, it all boils down to there's a lot of respect between Connor and I, but that doesn't mean that we have to like each other at every at every turn, right? You know, we could have a really great day and then the next day is like, hey man, it's fight day, don't talk to me. Hey man, you know, my guy, I'm dealing with this with my guys, don't talk to me. Or I'm, you know, so it was uh it was a a season that had so many different scenarios that made you uh you know act differently than you might have thought you would you know and that was kind of my my big thing going into it was like oh I don't know how I'm gonna react respond you know and uh, what you saw on some of these teasers was uh us responding or us reacting in a in a certain way and it uh it's all water under the bridge and we had a good time but ultimately uh, ultimately. It was a uh, a season full of entertainment, to say the least. You know, this is a a competition that is very special. Um, it's now very special to me. There have been numerous um, UFC champions or guys who have fought for UFC titles who came through this Ultimate Fighter scenario, this Ultimate Fighter process. It turns. It separates the boys from the men real quick, having to deal with this pressure um, and also enjoying this opportunity. You know, I did, um, 
UFC Unfiltered the other day with uh, Jim Norton and Matt Sarah. Matt Sarah had went through it. His was called his season was called Redemption, I believe, or or Revenge or something like that, where he won it and got the opportunity to fight George St. Pierre for the world title. It literally changed his life. The Ultimate Fighter completely changed the trajectory of his life. Without that, without the Ultimate Fighter, there is no Matt Sarah. Possibly, uh, no disrespect to Matt Sarah, he probably would have made it because he was a phenomenal fighter. But in that, the way it went down, without the Ultimate Fighter. He might not be the Matt Sarah that we all know right now. Um, and win, lose, or draw, Team Chandler showed up. They did a phenomenal job. Um, the fights that we won, the fights that we lost, the fights that we um, did well in, the fights that we were had lackluster performances, all of it was just kind of a part of the process. And ultimately, too, these guys aren't just fighters going out and fighting on a show on a Saturday night like you guys watch, like we get to enjoy every Saturday night on, on the UFC, on ESPN or pay-per-view or whatever it may be. These guys have the, have the opportunity to now be on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, the biggest sports network on the entire planet for 12 hours this summer. And that was one of the biggest things that I talked to them about. Guys, listen, you, only two of you guys can win this show. We've got two different weight classes. Only two of you guys can win this show. All right. So that means the other six, you're going to end up with your hat in your hand, but you're not actually, because everything you say, how you carry yourself, every single fight, every single interaction in the house, you have the ability to capture the hearts and minds of people across the entire world. Obviously we're all, um, you know, it's ESPN is a, it was an American network. This is a worldwide, the worldwide leader in sports. There'd be people across the entire world tuning in to watch you guys, to see how you respond, how you react, how you carry yourself, the things that you say. So you have the ability to build a brand that is so much bigger than you ever would if you went and signed with the UFC and had your first six fights and you won them all and you were kind of climbing the ranks. You still have a greater opportunity here even being the runner up or being the guy who is on the ultimate fighter finale and um, you have a fight because people are going to fall in love with your story. If you give them the ability to, if you give them the content to, if you give them the, the, the tangible assets to be able to, to be able to come into your mind and your heart. So um, I'm excited to, to go along this journey with you guys. As I said, this is our tough 31 reaction show. So it will be a reaction to each episode. Our next episode drops tomorrow night at midnight. Um, right after the ultimate fighter, um, we'll have about an hour break and it will be boom midnight. You guys will get my full on reaction and, uh, Hope it's a good one. You know, as I said, you, you're going to be living this in real time with me, essentially. You're getting my reaction, my instant, immediate reaction right away. So um, it's going to be a fun season. Make sure y'all are subscribed. Share it with your friends because uh, I think this, I don't know if I've actually ever seen anybody do this. I'm not saying I'm, you know, a smart guy by any means, but, you know, I had the ability. We're here at our, at our studio in Nashville and we're going to be watching the show and we're going to be, we're going to react to it. We're going to have tons of guests, big name guests, uh, both in studio here and the power of zoom as well. Um, so it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun. So make sure you're subscribed, make sure you guys are, uh, um, sharing it with your friends. If you're listening to the audio version, um, share that with your friends, make sure people know what we're doing here. And don't forget about our giveaway. Don't forget about our giveaway. It's not easy to get these Panini cards. Um, and it's definitely not easy to get them signed. Um, so we will have one of these, actually, I got a stack right here. So we're going to have, we're going to have 12 of these signed inside of as a bookmark of a signed copy of as a man thinketh there it is right here here's a, a good example of one so there will be different ways that we you guys will be able to enter in make sure you guys are subscribed to the youtube channel that will definitely uh be one of those ways we will have that for you guys how the contest is going to be run every single week as our first episode drops tomorrow the first tough 31 reaction show um so this has been 
a pleasure for me. Uh, this is how the season is going to go. This is going to be a fun process. Um, It'll be an interesting process because as I said, we're, you're going to be living it with me. I, I lived it in real life and now you guys get an inside look, an instant reaction to how I am now going to be living it as I watch it, the show come out. I'm sure there's going to be episodes where I'm sitting here smiling ear to ear and say, look at Team Chandler crushing it, right? And then other episodes where I'm saying, gosh, dang, man, wish we would have won that fight, felt sorry for that guy, or man, they cut that a little bit interestingly. Not going to lie, guys. That's not how it happened. You know, um, so it's going to be fun and, uh, I appreciate you guys. This has been a blast. This has been a pleasure. And this has been the tough 31 reaction pre-show brought to you by car shield. I'm your host, Michael Chandler. Thank you for joining us next. The first episode of the reaction show drops tomorrow night at midnight right here on my YouTube. God bless. We'll see you at the top. Yeah.